so we were doing Charles law and and we saw that that our volume is directly proportional to the temperature and we named it as V is K to T and if I plot it it looks something like like this okay <clears throat> Now it tells me that if I if I sort of make the temperature somehow less than the zero Kelvin, then the volume seems to become negative, and since that cannot happen, so it was argued that that zero K must be the lowest temperature that you can reach, and at that temperature the volume of all the all the gases will go to go to zero. Fine. Understand? So <coughs> now, this is at what? This is the, these graphs are at at constant mass and constant pressure. They are at constant mass and constant pressure. So so these are called isobars. The the graph is drawn for constant pressure. So why don't we uh, draw it from the origin? And hence is called, called, why don't we draw from origin alternate? No, not from the origin, it's called from the y-axis. From the y-axis, from here? Yeah. Why will you draw it? Why will you draw it? This is like y is equal to mx. So how can it go there? It has to pass through the origin. And why do I draw it dotted? Because we have still not reached that point ever. So you don't know. You have actually extrapolated it. Okay. Extrapolate means. Uh, you have you have drawn something and then you extend it, sort of. You extend the logic, so you extrapolate it to something, right? So. Now, what if I increase the pressure? Suppose this is at some pressure, and I and I decide that I'll increase the pressure. What will happen? What happens if I increase the pressure? Where will this graph shift, if at all? Upwards. 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 How? No, 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 no. This, see, let us try to understand. Let us try to understand. This is at some pressure, say P1. What if I, or, or say, so this is at some pressure P1. What if I increase the pressure? I, I, I am conducting the same thing. I am trying to plot the same graph. At a, so all through this, the pressure is the is a constant, right? All through this. Now I decide to increase the pressure. So where does this graph shift? Think and then tell. Don't just tell some, something like that. It's not going to help. Uh, by increasing the pressure, we are increasing the volume, right? I don't know. You tell. So for the same you by increasing the pressure. We increase the volume. So for How the do same you know? What? What do you mean to say? So pressure is uh, directly okay. proportional to the volume, right? So by increasing the pressure, we are increasing the volume. So for the same Normally, volume, what you say as right is not so right at times.
think that's why i gave you that whole idea of how this was being conducted so there was so once what happened i am conducting this with atmospheric pressure let us say so i keep on increasing the temperature and i keep on seeing where it goes and i can very well calculate the volume right if i know the cross sectional area is it not so that's how i conduct the first experiment so so maybe i i i, I take the temperature as uh, i i keep so here what happens the pressure is the atmospheric pressure now what happens now i conduct the same experiment so just try to think at the same temperature suppose the temperature is the same so 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 at the same temperature if i want to increase the pressure how do i do that i want to increase the temperature uh, the the at this point for example so i have kept it at some temperature t1 now i want to increase my pressure here how do i do that i'll have to put something over this so maybe you you put some weight over it that's how it's not what happens to the volume then the volume decreases at the same temperature if you want to increase the pressure pressure is inversely proportional to the volume which you said to be directly proportional that is boyle's law okay so what happens the volume shrinks if you want to increase the pressure at the you have to think like this otherwise i am telling you the gas law will stop making any meaning to you it will become a, become a dull drab equation which will always give you a shock because you will always commit some mistakes so let us try to understand the way the people the the uh, uh, robert boyle and 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 mr charles they came up with the experiments and try to think it is nothing like something unfathomable no it is not so at the same temperature i want to remain uh, keep the temperature same temperature same so this is that line the constant temperature line and i want to increase the volume uh, uh, increase the pressure so what happens the volume has to go down is it not so kind of charles and boyle's acting together and should be able to think that way so the second line for a higher pressure should be like that and maybe the third should be something like that so p2 p3 so p3 here 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 the condition is that p3 is greater than p2 is greater than p1 we get the point do we understand hmm it's it's not for nothing that i told you this you know because if you don't understand what is happening inside a container if you cannot see a container if you cannot see see some burner heating the container and and how things shift and move then you'll 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 cease uh, understanding the the concept okay you'll cease to understand that so so you have to be clear okay so so as the it's so it's so not not like all the graphs it is always that if you increase something so it, it starts moving up no no hmm fine so 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 we get this we get this graph okay <coughs> now it is not it is not for nothing that he said see what he said that the volume increases with temperature and how much with respect to degree centigrade with respect to degree centigrade how much 
1 by 273.15. So if you reduce the temperature, it should start reducing by, by that much amount, right? Now, if this is 0 K, then this is also minus 273.15 degree centigrade. No? If it is 0 K, then this is also this. Then according to the Charles law, because we saw, T is equal to T degree centigrade plus 273.15. So when this is 0, is it not? So 0 is equal to, so, so T degree, T degree or, or, or say, T equal to, let me T degree centigrade is equal to minus 273.15 degree centigrade. What I'm trying to say is 0 Kelvin corresponds to minus 273.15 degree centigrade. And as per Charles law, the volume reduces by 1 upon 273.15 of the original volume for every degree for every degree centigrade Centi, centi, what? Centigrade reduction in temperature. So what happens if I go down by by two seventy three point one five? So it becomes does at minus 273.15 degree centigrade the actual volume is equal to v naught this was the original minus 1 by 273.15 for every degree and i have the the temperature has fallen by this so it becomes that is it becomes zero so it becomes zero we understand Thus, and that's why this temperature is called the absolute zero, the absolute zero, because any further reduction, because any further reduction will make the volume negative. Which is not possible. which is not possible. Have you been able to achieve a No, 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 no. What is the minimum temperature that we have ever achieved? 5K or 7K, I think. 
5k or 7k is where we have gone till now. <coughs> It is cryogenics, liquefy, uh, whenever you expand a gas, it actually cools down, you keep on doing that, okay. The more you expand a gas, the more heat it takes away, the more heat energy it takes away from somewhere, the, the more chilled the whole thing becomes, right. But it's all about, not about these refrigerators. They work on the same principle, but <coughs> you have to <coughs> take it to, to extremely low temperatures. For example, uh, nitrogen boils at, I think, minus 160. So you have liquid nitrogen, you have liquid carbon dioxide, you have, you have liquid hydrogen, because that is what is used in your cryogenic engine as fuel. You burn hydrogen, but do not keep it in cylinders. You make it liquid first put it in rockets and then you burn it because that makes its volume very, very small and there is a space constraint in space, okay. So, so somehow, so you have to do that and, and what happens, there is a kind of a, a minus 200 degree centigrade here and suddenly the fuel burn, burns and, and the oxygen to burn that also has to be sent. Hmm? It is not like our atmosphere where you light a match and it burns. So it has to be supplemented by that oxygen. So that oxygen is also in liquid form and, and when they burn and suddenly the temperature goes to 2000 degree centigrade or more. And what happens? There is a rubber seal which is holding the liquid part, right? And, and across that seal, there is a temperature of 2000 here and a temperature of minus 200 here. So, so that seal has to be intact. There are many more things. It's, it's only one of the things I'm telling you. But, but that is what is the constraint when you are building a cryogenic engine and it is a very, very coveted kind of thing. So when India did its Pokhran blast, last in uh, 98 or somewhere. So there what happened? 98 or 97, yeah, 98, 99. So, so people put an embargo over all the technology and you were being given a cryogenic engine by by, by US, but they feared that you will use it for nuclear attacks or maybe you will put nuclear warheads over the, over the missiles and, and they stopped the supply. So eventually, India developed its own cryogenic engine and we are amongst the only four countries that, that has it, that's had its own indigenous China is there, US is there, uh, no, Germany is there. Russia is, has it and maybe, maybe France has it or, or France does not have it. No, not, no way, no, no. Only five, uh, I think four or five, <coughs> indigenous cryogenic engine. France uh, has got its own nuclear capability, that's a different thing. But cryogenic engines to, to, Huh. So, in intercontinental ballistic missiles or, or also for space, you, you need that. So, you, you must have seen, we have uh, just now launched some GSLV satellites. So, it was on that. Hmm? So, somehow, if they had been supplying us the engines, it would have been kind of, we would not have developed it on, a, on our own. Okay? And that's what happens in our lives also. Many times, what you don't get, you, you yourself build. And, and that is better. So when you are denied something, maybe the designs are something else, right? So it happens, it happens a lot and it has happened with India and we are quite happier with it. Though we got delayed by say some, some 10, 15 years, but <coughs> fine, now we have it, you know. And hence you are kind of out of all embargo that can be put on you. So, so fine. So, so this is our... Charles law, fine. Now, we go to the next law. <coughs>